And this Wednesday, the U.S. president is meeting with parents, teachers and students at the White House for a listening session that will include people impacted by mass shootings across the country. And uh, for more on this, we're joined by our international affairs commentator, Douglas Herbert. Douglas, we know that Donald Trump's had a very close relationship with the NRA. Uh, they, in fact, pumped it was millions of dollars into his presidential campaign. Are things changing? Um, well, put it this way. In recent years, he has marched practically in lockstep with the NRA. It's been a mutual relationship there, a mutual love, if you will. But, you know, let's not forget, Trump isn't really an ideologue. He makes decisions on the spur of the moment. He goes with his gut. He can flip-flop easily. He wrote a 2000, uh, in 2000, he wrote a book called The America We Deserve, where he had it ghostwritten, um, in which he basically criticized Republicans who he said, quote, um, you know, always are walking the NRA line and refuse even limited restrictions when it comes to guns. That was 2000, right? 18 years ago. More recently, the evidence has been exactly what you've said. I just want to bring up a little sh chart, a little bullet point uh, chart to show our viewers just what that relationship has been like more recently leading up to his campaign up until now. NRA endorsed Trump in that Republican primary back in 2016. They spent, you said millions? Well, it was $30 million around there on Trump's campaign. Uh, they both support background check legislation. So when we all talk about these new proposals, Donald Trump and the NRA are very much sort of on the same wavelength with uh, with uh, with the uh, the the background check legislation and the on the bump stocks they both the NRA and Trump they back regulation but not an outright ban and this is really really important um, because what you basically had with the with the bump stocks which are these clips which allow you to fire rifles up to a hundred times faster uh, accelerate the the firepower uh, you had after the Las Vegas shooting uh, basically the Justice Department. Uh, uh, had the issue punted over to it to decide whether it could do something. And the Justice Department basically ruled, we do not have the authority uh, to basically regulate on these bump stocks. We need Congress to act. We need legislation, laws to be passed before we can do this. This, this is smokes a, and mirrors. It's smokes and mirrors. The, the critics of it, which are almost all the Democrats um, on the other side of the aisle, basically are saying that these amount to very minor concessions. They are insubstantial. Um, they say that even on the background checks, uh, there are a million loopholes still that allow millions of guns to be sold uh, in other ways, that it's just not strict enough. It's, it's like you said, smokes and mirrors. It's not going to amount to much. That said, Donald Trump, like I said, isn't an ideologue, so maybe something can change. Maybe he will uh, cross the NRA at some point or at least rub it a little uh, in uh, the wrong way. But, Doug, you were just talking about Donald Trump's uh, flip-flop in policies. So is it possible that this isn't really a turning point when it comes to gun control in the U.S.? It's not only possible, most Americans would tell you it's probable that this is not a turning point. Look, when was the ultimate turning point? 2012, the Sandy Hook shooting. What more do you need? 20 uh, children were gunned down. Six adults were gunned down. After that, there was all the talk. Uh, Democrats were major push for stricter gun control, even Republicans at the time expressing support for greater restrictions. Uh, in access to guns. What happened? Well, NRA didn't in endorse any uh, legislation. Uh, it came to naught in Congress. Nothing happened. Under Trump's presidency here, we have had two of the deadliest mass shootings in, in history in the past year. In October, uh, we had the Las Vegas Strip, 59 people killed. A month later, we had the shooting at a church service in Sutherland Springs, Texas, 26 people killed there. No legislation passed. I'll leave you with this one thought. People time and again say that this is Washington's problem. They sort of lump it all together, Washington. It's Congress's problem. The issue is this. The dynamic here is very, very simple. The Republicans have overwhelmingly, almost to a person, uh, supported greater access to guns. If you want to reduce it to a real simplistic uh, phrase, it's that Republicans in Congress generally want Americans to be able to get as many guns as they want with as few restrictions as possible. Are there some Democrats who agree with them? Absolutely. But you can count them on your hands. There are very few of them. So it's overly simplistic to say this is Washington's problem. If you want change, and if as critics who say there haven't been enough gun control laws passed say something needs to be done, legislation has been changed, has to change, has to come, that is incumbent right now on the Republican-controlled Congress to do something to break the logjam. Don't point the finger, finger at Washington. That's too easy of an escape go. Say it like it is. Point the finger at one particular party right now in Congress, the Republican Party, until their members 
do something, have some sort of shift in the dynamic, in the debate, nothing is going to change on gun control. Well, thank you, Douglas Herbert, for that very pessimistic analysis on uh, the possibility of change on the gun control policy in the U.S.